In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. George, the Holy Great Martyr, is one of the well-known saints of our faith, much loved among our people. Many churches throughout the Orthodox world are in honor of St. George, <clears throat> and St. George is, has shown his closeness to us, the Christians, who are still here in this world, by working many signs and miracles among our people, guiding us to the heavenly kingdom, showing us that the things of this life are passing away very quickly, and that this life is but a dream. Last night we heard the miracle of the Romanian monk of Mount Athos, who had a visitation from St. George, who escorted him into the heavenly places. This is our homeland, that is, the heavenly places. And we pray to St. George and to the saints to guide us and to lead us and to our much longed for fatherly homeland, the Jerusalem on high, and to help us to understand how quickly time is passing and to help us not to get faint-hearted in the midst of the temptations, which in comparison to the great things which await us are really nothing. We need St. George and St. Demetrius and St. Nicholas and St. John and the many saints to help us come out of the illusion of being distracted by the different types of temptations which the demons send us, specifically, particularly to distract us from those things which are right here in front of us, to make sure that we do not participate and partake of those great things which the Lord has to offer to us and to all those Christians who search for him. God is hidden. We have a vast universe with many, many planets and this one insignificant planet, Earth, is where our life is. And the Lord appears to us as an insignificant man and is born in an insignificant cave so that we learn that we must search for him. He's hidden within us. We must do the work to find him. Christians throughout the centuries have done that work. And the church is a place where people receive sanctification. It's the place where people become saints. And we, the the ones who are still struggling here on earth look towards our saints to, to find some type of encouragement in the midst of our struggles. And if we read the details of the life of the martyrdom of St. George and of so many of the martyrs, we will see great determination. And we should be encouraged by that determination and compare our small insignificant temptations with the great determination of the saints. As we said, the, the faint-heartedness is a real problem, and so <clears throat> people very easily throw up their hands and give up one thing or another, and this is unfortunately one of the diseases in this world which makes people unsuccessful in this world and unsuccessful in that which they're trying to achieve. And we have to then find the grace and help to be able to Continue on the way with courage. <clears throat> so the great martyr George is known for, to be the liberator of captives. In one way or another, many of us are captives of our own passions, of our own mind, in our own world, in our own place. And we can pray to him and St. Demetrius to be let out of that captivity. A while back I mentioned a great miracle which I remembered hearing many times growing up from my grandmother, who was not just a pious woman, but I would say a very special, holy person, 
who was from very much another world. And I say this with a little bit of trepidation because sometimes people interpret things a certain way. We find in the life of St. Simeon, the new theologian, that he honored his elder and he was very much rebuked for that because people thought that for him it was the claim, his own claim to fame, which unfortunately does happen. People uh, try to promote themselves by promoting others and by association pretending that there's something which they're not. And this is why St. John of the Latter says concerning them, if you're a disciple of such a holy person, whatever happened to you? Why aren't you like that person? <clears throat> so we certainly don't make any claim to fame, perhaps more, as I've said before, claim to shame, since we cannot reach those heights of some of these people. The miracle that I mentioned was concerning the Feast of the Mother of God and concerning my grandmother and we heard of a scene which took place in the village in modern day northern Greece. And now we have another miracle. And I mentioned the first one because there was a holy person, a holy grandmother who was the grandmother of my grandfather, who my own grandmother was taken care of. She reposed when she was 105, from what I'm told, in the early 1950s. And she very much was someone who loved the traditions of the church. Since, as you know, as Orthodox Christians, one of the reasons why we can boast that we have the apostolic faith is because throughout the generations, our forefathers, the saints, and the ministers of the Holy Church preserved the boundaries of the church. They were very sensitive about keeping the faith. And so we can't lose it now. And now more than ever, the world presents itself and fights that. And it's a huge, as I've mentioned before, a huge tidal wave. The ways of the world are very much against those things which we are taught in the church. And there's a specific thing which we must keep in mind since we see the world has fallen. Continuously we're hearing about wars, we're hearing about mass shootings, depression level is extremely high, anxiety is extremely high, this world is imperfect. The church offers us something very different. The word psychiatrist means, psychiatros means a doctor of the souls, of a soul. That's very much not exactly what happens nowadays, but the church has the real healing of the soul. And we've seen it many times. In the secular world, you'll hear that a narcissist cannot change. But here, we've actually witnessed narcissists changing because the healing comes directly from Christ. So we have this grandmother who tried to instill in the others that we should follow the patristic calendar. And my grandmother, who was an extremely pious person from her youth, was having thoughts about it. And she thought that she was making too much of a big deal over nothing. So <clears throat> before the feast of St. George with the church calendar, she had a dream where someone told her that she should be at the church of St. George, which was the central church of the village for the feast day. Those of you who know a little bit about the history but we were under the Ottomans for 500 years. The village was burnt in the early 1900s. Many homes were burnt, but the two main churches were burnt, the church of St. Anna and St. Paraskevi, which was an, a church which had iconography and was uh, old, many centuries old, and the church of St. Demetrius, which was right in the center of the village. Those two churches were burned down, and a church 
in honor of St. George, was built nearby in the early 1900s. There was an older church of St. George further out of the village, but within the environs of the village. And so St. George was one of the patrons of the village. And so she had this dream where someone appeared and says, you must be in church on my feast day, the feast day of St. George. And she says, the feast day of St. George, that passed already. No, 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 it's, it didn't pass, it's upcoming. And so she went and reported this dream to the grandmother. <coughs> and the grandmother and my grandmother went to the priest who didn't want to have anything to do with it because there was a persecution against the old counters of Greece at the time. And then the person who was most likely St. George appeared once again in a dream and said, tell the priest that he better open up the church for you or else something bad will happen to him. So the priest agreed. He was afraid when he heard that. He agreed to open up the church and in this dream, which was a vision, my grandmother was told which women to take to go to the church of St. George. And uh, they all went. <clears throat> and they lit all the lamps, and they prayed, and they spent the whole night there. They, they kept the vigil. But the women fell asleep. My grandmother stayed awake. I know that growing up, I know that she kept vigils, not just once or twice, not just on feast days, but every single day, every single night, and throughout the day, and throughout the night, it was constant prayer. The fasting, which she did, was superhuman. The vigils, which she did, was superhuman. She was from another world. So on this feast, they were all praying. The women fell asleep. The grandmother was there, and she continued to pray to St. George. And in the middle of the night, she heard galloping, the galloping of a horse. And there was a rushing wind which entered into the church together with this galloping horse. And because of the wind, all of the lamps started swinging, and they actually went out, and the church got dark again. And it was a visitation of the Holy Glorious Great Martyr George. I'm sure that the spiritual sentiments which my grandmother felt at that time was very deep. But from that point forward, <clears throat> she understood that we should hold on to all the traditions of the Church, whatever the tradition may be. And so we have this as an example because the saints of God are the preservers of the church because they know that in the church we can receive sanctification. And by honoring those things which have been passed down to us by the fathers of the church, we can receive sanctification. And that the church is the depository of grace, it's the place where grace is given to us freely, grace which will really <clears throat> be something which we cannot express in human words. But in reality, it's there, it's here. And so all of us are obligated to hold on to the purity of the faith. It doesn't mean that any of us should become fanatics. It doesn't mean that any of us obviously should become Pharisees. Because that is also part of the tradition of the church. We are not Pharisees. We do not judge any individual particularly for any type of personal sin. We should not, at least. Unfortunately, many times we do. But we should, however, uh, discern. Discern where the truth is and, and keep it. Let us pray on this day to the Holy Glory, Glorious Great Martyr George that we hold on to those things which have been passed down to us and that he continue to help us along the path. 
which we are going, the path which we hope will lead to life everlasting. And may we have his blessings and prayers together with that of the blessed grandmother who became a nun, Pariskevi, Petka nun. And she <clears throat> was named after St. Pariskevi, who was the patron, as I said, one of the patrons of the village. By their blessings, by their prayers, may we also hold on to our faith and may we also be given the gift of eternal life. Amen.